are my new pediatrician, and I'm the father. My kid is Johnny Jr. Okay, I've been very. My kid has been sick for a long time, and I just changed pediatricians, and I came to you because I want a second opinion, try to help figure out what's wrong with my kid. So I bring you my child, Johnny Jr. He's four years old, and I tell you that he's been sick for the last two years. He has episodes of fever all the time, and he's just feeling miserable. So what, what else are you going to ask me? What else do you want to know? And remember, I'm the father, and you're my new pediatrician. So growing. So, yeah. Either weight gain or height. Yeah, so Johnny continues to grow well. Like, you know, he's doing okay in school, and the, uh, the pre previous, my previous doctor always told me, show me those curves that you see, and he says, like, look, Johnny's doing well. I'm not concerned. And when you say I fever all the time, how often is that? And does he feel well in between those? Yeah, so it's about a fever um, every three to four weeks, right? It lasts about, I don't know, two to four days. He's miserable during that time. It happens all the time. Uh, you know, he's in kindergarten, and whenever he gets a fever, uh, they don't let him go to school. So either me or my wife have to, has to stay home uh, because I just can't leave him home alone. So it, it's been really a real drag into our, our family life. And how, how many months did you say it was going on? So it's been going on almost two years. How, how do you how, how does, how do you define fever? Yeah, so, you know, he feels hot. Sometimes I take the temperature uh, with that ear thing that I bought in the pharmacy. And, you know, it's, it's like 102, 103. Sometimes it can be as high as 104. Uh, and my poor kid is just miserable during that time. Has he had any rashes? No, no rashes. And it sounds like this has been going on for a while. What sort of things has been done already to, because there are some things that would be kind of concerning, so yeah. I presume it's been worked up before. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I just wonder, you know, like, of course he hasn't had an infection for two years, but I presume in the past he must have had testing for infections and maybe scans. Yeah, so, like you that. know, like, I bring him, he, he, my kid always complains of a sore throat. This is going on, complains of a sore throat. So, uh, my old pediatrician used to do the swab for the sore throat. Sometimes it's positive and he's like, oh, you know, it's strep throat. And he gives me antibiotics. Sometimes it's not. So that certainly has been done. Do the antibiotics help it? I don't know. I mean, you know, it always lasts about two to four or so five no days what, and then it goes away. No matter what they do, whether they do something or nothing, it always lasts two or four days? Yeah. Does he have problems like pain in his, in his abdomen or his arms and legs or does he become less active when he's sick? Yeah, so like definitely like he, he's just sitting there, he does nothing. He's sitting on the couch, uh, doesn't want to do anything. He watches TV when he's feeling ill. He does complain a lot of belly pain. Sometimes he has a little bit of vomiting, a little bit of diarrhea. During those fevers? Yeah. What about in between? How does he feel during He's fevers? great. He runs around. He, he's in the youth soccer league. He is, he's the star of his team. Uh, so he's, he's, he's wonderful. Tennis shoes? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's too much. Yeah. Uh, he's a star. <laughs> so, so yeah, like in between he's totally fine. But these episodes just happen all the time. And he's miserable. And, and I really think that there's something really, really wrong with my son. Travel, any other sick people? So we've been to Cape Cod uh, for the summer. And uh, although sometimes we tr try to plan our trip according to you know, when my child is expecting to have fevers. Because I think we can almost plan it on a calendar. You know, I can tell you that he had it you know, two weeks ago, and in like three to four weeks, it's going to happen again. So when we go to Cape Cod, I'm sure to pick those times that where he's not ill. Do where you, Where are you from? I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you where have are a you guys from? Of what is it? So I, I'm, I'm concerned that my child has cancer. Is it anywhere in your family? Uh, no. Okay. And Where's, I think Dave was asking where you, you guys know, are from. My, yeah, no. So I'm, you know, we're we're from Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, my 
my grandparents came on, you see him. <laughs> on the boat, on that boat from England over, over here. That was an old grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> great, 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 great grandparents, Johnny Sr. But generations back, the, your family's from England? Massachusetts, yeah. England, yeah. Had you gone to Cape Cod the first time he had a fever? Had yeah. one of these episodes. Had you been to Cape Cod before that? I don't remember. So let's pause there. I think you guys have really taken um, a great history. Dave, can you summarize sort of what we've learned? So, um, little Johnny the 14th <laughs> um, has basically two years of um, relapse remitting fevers that are associated with um, some vague GI complaints um, and fevers as high as 104 um, who is otherwise doing well um, and has um, and is healthy and feels well in between these episodes. Yeah. And, and any, anything else that he left out? Any other symptoms that little Johnny has? Sore throat. That I mentioned? Sore throat. Sore throat. Great. Lethargy. Yeah. Lethargy. Intermittent lethargy. Intermittent. Yeah, yeah. But with the episodes. Episodic. Totally right. Lethargy during the episodes. Vomiting. Vomiting sometimes. Okay. And I think, I mean, it's important to say, you know, what isn't going on. So, yeah. you know, normal family history, um, family history travel to Cape Cod. Yeah. Social history, so, no, you know, Cape Cod travel, I guess. Does that, does that make you think of anything in specific? Um, the yeah. Oh. Yeah. Babesiosis and what other kinds of illnesses? So, tick-borne illness. Tick -borne. Yeah, so tick-borne illnesses. Okay. Um, but you said no rash and no bone or joint pains. Yeah. Not that that rules it out, but... Two years might rule it out. That's a long yeah. time for the I have no idea. Yeah. So, let, let's start, before we get further into this case, let's start generating a differential diagnosis about, you know, sort of big possible causes of this sort of recurrent fevers, unclear etiology. So just physiologic viral illnesses in a two to four year old who goes to school. Is that common? I mean, it's not common to, the predictable nature of it isn't common, but sure, four year olds who go to school on soccer teams, they get sick sometimes. Tara, do your kids ever get sick? They're thankfully outgrowing that. Okay, definitely. right, and did they get, you know, when they were two or four years old, did they get sick a lot? Yes, yeah. more so. So, absolutely. So this is probably the most common cause of recurrent fevers in children. It's just viral infections over and over and over again. And you, and you said it right. When kids start attending kindergarten or being or pre-K and being with other kids, that's when this really, this thing really happens. And even if they stay home, but their sibling goes to school, you know, that sibling always brings all those bugs into, into the home. So, uh, certainly, you know, viral infections is most common. What else could be going on? Well, I asked about the rash because I was concerned about Stills disease. Ah, okay, Stills disease. What do we call that? Stills disease. What do we call Rheumatoid arthritis? Ooh, okay, so, uh, is, there, is there a broad topic that you can put in Sort of, Probably, but I don't know if I can. Autoimmune disease? Rheumatologic? Ah, I see. Rheumatologic. Okay, so we'll we'll put rheumatologic conditions. Rheumatologic. Um, and within those, I heard two things. OP said something about autoimmune diseases. Right? And then, Tony, you mentioned something that's now called systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis. <laughs> I know it's a, it's a big word. Uh, and we can talk about uh, that in a, little, in a little bit. And that actually, those kinds of diseases are 
under the umbrella of auto-inflammatory. All right, and we can, we have time, we can talk about that. So what you mentioned is systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Great. Um, other infections, I mean tick-borne illness. Great, great, so other infections. So infections like tick-borne, uh-huh. Um, they could have run-of-the-mill infections, but just be more susceptible to them. Yeah. Why, why would somebody be so susceptible to infections? Yeah. Immune deficiency, excellent. Immunodeficiencies. But also so just some familial periodic fever of some kind. Uh -huh. Like of a Mediterranean, Mediterranean origin? <laughs> well, wow. there's a F, but there's like traps and all sorts of other... Strategies. And that's what I thought you were getting at with the abdominal symptoms yeah. with, with familial was, Mediterranean fever. I was asking because I was trying to see that with joint pain. And Great. Mm -hmm. Great. So all of those things that you mentioned sort of go under the same umbrella. So FMF, familial Mediterranean fever, traps. Can you say what I don't know what traps? traps? It's like some TNF receptor mutation that causes a recurring fibrosis. Yeah, so it's this genetic disease that causes recurrent episodes of fever. Oftentimes you have rashes abdominal symptoms, conjunctivitis, um, it's fairly rare. Is that an acronym? Perhaps? Yeah, so it's TNF receptor associated periodic syndrome, right? You knew that, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so, so, so before we dive into sort of what these guys are, let's, let's try to round out the differential, okay? So, what else could be going on in a child, two to four years of age, who has recurring infections? Why else? So we mentioned immunodeficiency. So, Tara, you mentioned that. When you say immunodeficiencies, what, what do you mean? Well, I'm thinking of um, like combined CVI. I don't know actually much about them, so I'm not sure if it would be this mild and intermittent. Okay. These kids would be well or not. But those but, so what, what kind of problems are those? Where is the problem? The immune system itself is yeah. deficient, or there's some antagonist. Yeah. So, what what is the immune system like? B cells, T cells. T cells, T cells. Yeah. Cells, T cells. yeah. You mentioned, you know, CVID. So, problems of like B cells, B cell, T cell. Maybe the ability to make antibodies, right? So maybe you have some deficiencies there. Great. Maybe mechanic oh. things too, like like um, like lungs. I know you can get like congenital lung. Wonderful. Brain. I don't know yes. What called, but. So anatomic causes, right? So uh, whether you have congenital cysts in the lung that make you more prone to having infections. I remember when I was a kid, I used to get ear infections all the time. Did you guys, you know, your kids or you have a lot of ear infections? Sometimes they say that it's because the drainage of the tubes is too narrow um, or too straight, right? And, uh, you know, so some kids have some anatomic abnormalities that make them um, more likely to get infections. Um, anything else? Tony, you had mentioned something in, our, in a prior discussion about the pancreas. Another common cause of infections. What what was that? Cystic fibrosis. Yeah, right. So some where, where should we put that? Is that a separate category or does it go there? To some degree, it's an anatomic issue. Yeah. Um, but they, I don't know how commonly they present with sort of pharyngitis and sore throat as opposed to res recurrent respiratory uh, infections. Yeah. So it's sort of anatomic, sort of at the molecular level, right? So those patients with cystic fibrosis often get recurrent infections in the lungs, right? Um, so we can, we can put that there. And they have like uh, excretory dysfunction of the pancreas, yeah. so that can cause GI symptoms. Great, great. All right. Um, I think, I mean, 
dad's concerned about cancer. I think we should at least clearly rule it out and address his concern. Yeah, great. Um, so I mean, he, over two years is yeah, highly unlikely. It's a little but, bit odd. But he's concerned, so we should at least think Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. So in, in a child of this age, what are the most common causes of cancer? You think is this prostate cancer? Leukemia. <laughs> Leukemias, yeah, right? So um, leukemia, so like which like ALL. one? ALL. ALL is probably the most common. There's also bone tumors are fairly common in children, brain tumors. Exactly. I think those are the, the most common causes. So HIV? HIV, okay. So recurrent infections like HIV. I think we should always consider that. Okay. Is that it? Okay. <laughs>